Good day everyone. Welcome back to our lesson. And in this video, I will discuss our repertoire against the Sicilian defense. So the Sicilian defense is the most popular reply after 1e4. And I've decided that after c5, we will go for the move knight c3. The close Sicilian. And specifically, the Grand Prix attack. So after knight c6, f4. You may ask me, why not knight f3? Because if we play this move, one course is not enough to discuss all the possible variations, the deviations of this open Sicilian move. That's why I decided to go for the close Sicilian. So if you play knight f3, you need to study a lot of lines, you need to memorize a lot of lines, and you need to be updated because there are new trends nowadays in this uh, open Sicilian that's why it's much better to uh, study this first I think and personally I play this uh, knight c3 move the grand prix attack so I think the top player who plays this the most is super grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura especially in his online games he plays this a lot in blitz game in bullet games and there are some ideas here that uh, have been played in his games. But of course, I've seen those games first before I created this course. But some of them I also improvise. So uh, watch out for those uh, sample games in the end of this uh, course. So after knight c3, knight c6 is the main line. But of course, black can also do without knight c6. And later we are gonna discuss that so after knight c6 we will go for f4 and here the main line is g6 but let's examine the deviation first so the first one is the less serious uh, I think it's the least serious deviation it's the move e5 so after e5 we're just gonna capture this and queen h4 is harmless because the e4 pawn is defended so we're just gonna go g3 there's no queen takes e4 because the knight is defending this pawn after queen e7 we just develop the bishop and we have a good position already why is that because we're about to castle after knight f3 his pieces are underdeveloped we have this pressure on the f file uh, we can pressure this f7 pawn and we have this juicy outpost on the d5 square that's why I think we have a comfortable position here. So of course, he can play knight takes e5 after f takes e5. After knight takes e5 here, I suggest an anti-positional move. What is an anti-positional move? It's a move that uh, violates some positional concepts in the position, but sometimes it can be... Uh, good it can be a good move because of tactical reasons or uh, attacking reasons and that's the move d4 I consider this anti-positional because it makes your e4 pawn weak and isolated so after c takes d4 queen takes d4 this pawn is isolated pawn but don't worry about that because the d7 pawn is also isolated and our idea here is to play bishop f4 and castle so game may continue like this we can play knight c6 we will just play queen d3 if he tries to repeat of course we will not repeat with queen d4 but if you want a draw for example you only need the draw you could do that but of course most of the time when we are playing white we need to win and uh, here we will play queen g3 after d6 we just play bishop f4 and we already have a good position our next move is castle and by the way we are threatening to capture this knight he cannot bring the bishop out because the g7 is hanging and uh, he cannot develop really well and uh, we have a good play in the middle game actually it's not yet the middle game it's still the opening because his pieces are still sleeping here on the back rank so after queen d3 he can try bishop c5 instead and we will play bishop f4 so after bishop f4 knight f6 castle castle and then bishop d6 so here if he takes on d6 we will just take back 
After rook c8, we will play bishop c4. If black plays queen e7, we will just capture this and then play knight f3. So here we already have a good position mainly because uh, although we have a weakness here, he has a weakness here on d7 too. And these pieces here are still not uh, developing. Uh, we, we are about to play rook e1 next and maybe e5 and also we could play rook f1 attack this f7 upon if it tries to take this we will just capture it back and play bishop takes f7 he cannot capture back because there's knight g5 if black plays king f8 we can just play bishop d5 or even bishop b3 we have a good position already because our weakness is gone the pawns are equal his king is weak and he still has this isolated pawn not to mention his pieces on the back back rank are still uh, sleeping there so here instead of bishop takes d6 if your opponent is a really good tactician he might find the move knight g4 so the idea of this is to play knight f2 and it leaves the bishop on c5 hanging so if bishop takes c5 it looks like white is winning but there is queen g5 check and uh, he takes the bishop on c5 back and there is knight f2 threat which is very annoying so here uh, i suggest that you play rook d2 this is a computer move so take note that uh, some of the lines here i think most of the lines here uh, have been have been engine analyzed uh, i think uh, some of the lines are played by grad masters but most of the lines have been analyzed by uh, engine so uh, latest engine strongest engine i'm not just gonna say what's the name of the engine but uh, i used uh, engine here so uh, if you are worried about the engine evaluation trust me it favors white even if the material if you look at it it doesn't favor white because after rook d2 there is knight f2 we're just gonna capture it and play knight f3 we are not going to capture back here because we want our bishop to be strong here so after knight f3 black may play rook e8 we will go queen d2 after bishop b6 bishop c4 so here we have two good bishops we already have a good position here even we are exchanged down and if you check in the engine evaluation it clearly favors uh white so th there could be knight g5 move the rook is coming here and his pieces here have no way of activating if it tries bishop g7 i think knight g5 forces him to uh, give up the material back with rook e7 or rook e6 and I think after that, we will still have a good position because there, there could be some other tactics uh, which you can find here. So uh, now let's go on to the next deviation. So here we just discussed the E5 move, which is uh, very rare. So I think it's very unlikely that you will uh, face this especially if you play the grand prix attack in an otb game i think it's more likely that you will face this in an online game in a blitz game in a bullet game so it's important to know uh, some line you don't need to know uh, all lines here in in this move because it's a it's a less serious move sometimes you will face this because of mouse leap for example your opponents want to play e6 and they mouse leap to e5 uh, so it's important to know some ideas here so after f4 let's discuss the move knight f6 so what about this move what's the idea of this move the idea of this move is that if you play normally let's say you play knight f3 he will play d5 or black will play d5 or she will play d5 so the idea of that is to uh, challenge the center immediately but this move has one drawback and that is e5 so we kick the knight away it cannot go here obviously so it has to go back to g8 and now we develop our knight so uh, after knight f3 i think the logical continuation here for black is to play d6 so he is attacking our center and now we go d4 so here 
this is one of the few times we will play d4 because remember in this line in the grand prix attack lines it's very rare that we go for the d4 move uh, i think most of the most of, most of the lines you, you just put your pawn on d3 most of the lines here you just put the pawn on d3 later on in the game not uh, immediately uh, it's very rare that we play d4 so remember that because we want this to be solid and play f5 later that's one of the ideas of the grand prix attack so after knight f6 e5 knight g8 knight f3 d6 d4 it makes sense to play d4 immediately because we want to exploit the waste the wasted time of of black he played knight f6 and and he went back to g8 so we want to exploit that clearly so after d4 here there are two obvious choices for black the first one is pawn takes e5 and the second one is pawn takes d4 so if he goes for pawn takes e5 we will go d5 after knight b8 we have f takes e5 and here we have a dominating position first of all he wasted two knight moves knight f6 knight g8 knight c6 knight b8 second the pawns here are really dominating the the blacks position and uh, lastly we will play bishop c4 next and castle law castle short and we have this pressure on the f7 pawn and because of that that i think uh, this is clearly winning i think in a few moves uh, we can win this because it's very hard to find a good move for black so instead of that he could try e4 and then uh, if, if it if we takes he, he could take here and take here and complicate the game but we will not him al allow to do that we will not allow him to do that we will just play knight takes e4 after knight b8 we just give a check and after bishop d7 we play this queen e2 move we are threatening checkmate in one if he gives a check here we could simply play knight c3 or i think even bishop d2 i think bishop d2 is better because we have this trick knight d6 check if he plays queen takes b5 so here we have a good position if he plays something else let's say he played something like queen c7 to prevent the checkmate we could just castle and uh, his pieces are still on the back rank we have good chances of uh, successful attack so instead of d takes e5 black could try c takes d4 so after c takes d4 the game will uh, i think it will go to an end game because we are forced to take here after pawn takes e5 knight takes e6 black could take on d1 of course if it takes here it, it's uh, i think it's worse because we will just take on d8 and take on e5 uh, we have a good chances of attack even if there's no queen because the king is really exposed here on d8 after bishop e3 castle castle long i think it will be much better for us so he has to take here first this is the obvious move knight takes d1 pawn takes e6 f takes e5 so here i think the position is a little bit complex but i think we have the better chances here because we have the pawn majority on the queen side although he has the pawn majority here i think it's hard to create a pass pawn here because the kings are here on the king side so that's that's one of the technique that you could use in the end game if there are pawn majorities on both sides the side where the king belongs usually uh, it's very hard to create a pass pawn there so after pawn takes e5 he cannot go knight f6 so the obvious choice is bishop f5 first we will go knight e3 attacking the bishop bishop e4 this is very obvious too trying to centralize the bishop here we will go bishop d2 and after knight f6 there's an interesting concept here we go bishop d3 of course the bishop cannot escape if it goes here we could just take it we have the bishop pair advantage and we could even take there uh, the most likely response here is bishop takes d3 we go c takes d3 after e6 we attack this pawn so here there are many ways to defend you could go king d7 or rook c8 
but after that uh, we could try rook f1 so of course what's the idea of rook f1 of course keeping an eye on f7 pawn at the same time there is rook f4 and we could go rook d4 rook c4 or even rook a4 putting pressure on the queen side and i think because of that we have the better chances here because his knight is a little bit misplaced it cannot really be activated after rook f1 and uh, he, he doesn't have any counterplay uh, at the moment so because of that i think uh, we have good chances of winning this game so now let's move on to the to the next variation after 3 f4 so after f4 we have discussed e e5 and also knight f6 so far now let's see about a6 so why a6 it prevents bishop b5 also in some lines it could go b5 so what does it uh what does it do what does it do if it prevents bishop b5 because we want to play bishop b5 we, we do not want to play bishop c4 so that's our grand prix line because in the grand prix there are two uh variations either you go bishop b5 later after g6 with knight f3 bishop g7 bishop b5 or bishop oops bishop b5 or bishop c4 so our grand prix we will go bishop b5 and that's the point of playing a6 it prevents bishop b5 and because of that we will not uh, play a4 or something because if you play a4 you want to play bishop c4 clearly to have a safe square for the bishop there we will not do that we will just go g3 so what's the idea of this move the idea of this move is to just put the bishop here on g2 so it's very simple so after g3 g6 is the most obvious move we just go bishop g2 bishop g7 we could just go d3 or we could go knight f3 actually the move order doesn't really matter after d6 we just go this knight, knight f6 we just castle castle 2 and now we go h3 so usually this is the setup that you should aim for if you cannot do the grand prix attack if he plays a6 if your opponent plays a6 we will go for this kind of setup so what's so good about this setup so this setup is good because we can generate a good attack here on the king side we could go g4 we could regroup the knight here on c3 to the g3 square and we could play f5 later on and we will have a uh, good chances of mating our opponent actually black can also attack here but doesn't hurt so much because we don't have any king here i think we could uh we could parry it easily we could defend it easily and if ever tries to uh win something here i think it's it will just be a pawn and thus if our attack is successful here on the king side we can be uh, able to mate him so i think our attack is much stronger than his play on the on the queen side so remember he could try different setup let's say after a6 he could go d6 e6 knight f6 bishop e7 but our setup is it's not gonna change it's gonna be bishop g2 d3 knight f3 castle or uh, we could do it in different order doesn't matter and then after that we try pushing our pawns here because that's the idea of grand prix that's the idea of f4 we will we want a quick f5 advance and eventually maybe g5 or even e5 in some lines so uh, just follow the setup there's no specific moves that you need to memorize if you place this uh, preventive move a6 so now let's move on to the move d6 so after d6 what's the point of this move so the point of this move is uh, to bring the bishop out here on g4 because in some lines the bishop gets jailed here on c8 it, it, it cannot get any activity in some lines that's why this might be the reason why black wants to bring the bishop out immediately so after d6 we just go knight f3 if our opponent goes for g6 we just go bishop b5 and we we are going to discuss this later because it just transposes to 3 g6 
So it's just a transposition after d6, bishop b5. So we're going to discuss this just a little bit later. So let's discuss first the d6 move. d6, knight f3. There's no other idea, I think, than to play bishop g4. So either you go for g6, which, which is going to transpose to the main line, or just go bishop g4. So after bishop g4, we play bishop b5. So this is the first five moves that uh, we want to make in the Sicilian Grand Prix attack main line. So usually we, we play these five moves and uh, we try to generate an attack from there. So after bishop b5, here queen d7 is the most logical move preventing the double pawn. So after queen d7, we just play h3. We force this bishop to capture on f3 because if he tries to run, then we will chase that bishop and it's gonna be trapped. And of course, we are winning here. So after bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, g6, we just castle. After bishop g7, we play d3. So usually, this is the setup. So this is very strong because uh, it's the Capablanca setup. The bishop is gonna be exchanged here, whether you take a knight or a bishop in the in in this uh, Sicilian Grand Prix attack, and we have this beautiful complement. The bishop is a dark square bishop, and the pawns, the central pawns, are controlling the light squares. So uh, I think it's a very good strategic uh, pawn structure. So after d3, black can try a6. We could just take here and then play f5. So now all of the pawns are on the light squares. It complements well to our bishop. I mean the central pawns, of course, this is on the dark square, but doesn't really matter. And the pawns are controlling the light squares here, the bishop controlling the dark squares. And at the same time, we have this attack on the f file, on the f7 pawn, on the f7 square. If you place knight f6, White could just simply play bishop d2 and play rook e1 and have an easy game and maybe play g4 after castle. Oops. But here there's an interesting engine suggestion and that is knight d5. So what does this move do? If black takes, we will just capture and there's f takes g6 and there's a check on f7. And if black doesn't take, then he cannot castle. So for example, he tried to castle here, there's knight takes e7. So if it tries to castle here, there's also knight x e7, so he cannot really do that. And it's very hard for him to find the move. For example, he tries to defend this with queen d7, there's knight b6, forking the rook and queen. I'm not sure what to do here. If I'm black, maybe just take here on f5, but that's an ugly move to make because that permanently opens the f file for white, but not for black. And it weakens the h7 uh, pawn because it makes the h7 pawn isolated pawn not to mention it also opens the the g file so the rook can come here later so uh, i'm not sure if that's a good idea but uh, i think it might be the only idea in this position so now let's move on so this is 3d6 so so far we have discussed the move e5 also knight f6 also a6 and d6 so now let's analyze the move e6. So this is one of the more serious response against the Grand Prix attack. And I've seen many chess books which recommend this, uh, this setup against the Grand Prix attack. So after e6, we will just go knight f3. And here there are many choices of black. So we're going to try to look uh, at each one of them. So the first one is d5. So this is the main line. And we're going to look at that last. Also knight f6 is possible. a6 is also possible. And also knight g7. So we're going to take a look first at the move a6. So if you place a6, there's no way we are playing bishop b5. And of course, bishop c4, we don't do that. Uh, because there is b5. It's a waste of time. So now... Can you try to guess what we do here? Okay, so if you want to guess, pause the video. But uh, anyway, I'm going to tell you now. 
So after a6, we're gonna play g3. So it's the same scenario earlier. If if white if black plays a6, we will go g3 with that kind of setup. So if e6, knight f3, if a6, we go g3. It's the same setup after b5, bishop g2. So black can try developing the bishop here also. We will just castle after queen c7, d3. So we have exactly the same setup as earlier. Oops. And now uh, we could try pawn storming later on. But of course, you want to wait because black might try to castle here on the queen side and uh, I think it's better to change plans and try to generate some uh, pawn storm here or pawn attacks that could eventually lead to opening of the files here. Anyway, the position here on the king side is very solid. If black ever tries to attack, I think it will not be successful because we control a lot of squ squares here on the king side. So after, after bishop g2, uh, an interesting... I think there's an interesting try for black and that is d5. So after d5, there's an interest, interesting res reply and that is pawn takes d5 and then knight e5. So this is a very nice idea. Uh, if you will capture here, you need to remember this because naturally taking here is a bad idea. It opens the diagonal of the bishop. At the same time, it removes our pawn center. So usually you don't want to take uh you don't you don't want to capture a pawn on the center which will lead to you losing your pawn center so i mean your center pawn like this one on e4 so if you capture here he still has his pawn center on d5 and we lose our uh, own center pawn on e4 so usually that's a bad idea that's a bad move but in this case there is this knight e5 move Knight takes e5, we just capture, we have pressure here, and after knight e7, defending this pawn, or maybe even bishop e6, uh, it's just the same, we will go d4. And I think here we have a good position, because either he captures here, and we open the, the file, putting more pressure on the d5 pawn, or he goes c4. So if he goes c4, we will just castle, and we might go queen f3, there's a weakness on, on f7, also on... Uh, d5 we could maneuver the knight here on f4 overall we have a good uh, position and i think we have uh, great chances in the middle game so now let's discuss the other moves so we have discussed the a6 move let's take a look at knight f6 so it looks like it's the same from the previous move but this time there's an extra option of knight d5 after e5 but uh, after knight f6 we will still go e5 after knight d5 we will go g3 so if he captures here i think we will just take with the b pawn uh so take a look so after knight c3 pawn takes c3 it will just be the same so uh after g3 d6 it will just transpose so d6 bishop g2 takes knight takes e5 knight takes e5 f takes e5 so this pawn on e5 is very common here in the Grand Prix attack and usually it looks like a weakness because it's just alone there but uh, it's more of a strength in white's position because it takes away many squares the f6 square, the d6 square and uh, if there's a pawn on e5 for example it came from f4 capturing that in that direction it opens the f file so uh, as long as it's gonna it's not gonna be taken immediately then i think it's a good idea to have a pawn there but if you calculate and you see that the pawn on e5 is gonna be lost immediately then i think it's a bad idea you need to have a counter tactic to counter that uh that idea for example there's queen c7 is gonna capture this but in this case i think there's there's queen e2 and after that there's no way that he can win that the pawn because we also have a pressure on his position and we could play d4 if he ever takes in that direction so here uh bishop e7 can be played castle castle and after knight c3 we just take with the with this pawn and there's queen f3 ideas there's queen h5 ideas there's d3 c4 bishop b2 ideas or 
uh, d3 bishop f4 simply defending this pawn so after castle he could play castle 2 he could go d3 queen c7 pressuring this queen h5 so if he takes we will just capture back and if he tries to play g6 we could just go queen e2 and we have bishop h6 so i think g6 is not a good idea but if he doesn't do that i think we could still force him to do that by playing bishop e4 or we could just leave the queen here we could try c4 bishop b2 or even just bishop d2 and rook a e1 so there are many choices here and if there are many choices that uh white can choose to if there are many plans then it means that we have a good position because uh many plans work many plans are good and we have a comfortable position so now let's take a look at the move after knight f3 let's take a look at the move knight g7 so after knight g7 here we need to play d4 so this is one of the few times that we will play d4 because if we play bishop b5 it doesn't really work here he will play a6 and after bishop takes e6 he will take with the knight and we don't have any uh, any advantage any positional advantages because there is no double pawn so after knight g7 we just go d4 so you need to remember this because it's like an open sicilian but his knight is placed on e7 instead of being placed on f6 so after d4 g takes d4 knight takes d4 knight takes d4 is the main move but d5 can also be played here so if black goes for d5 we will go bishop e3 one possible continuation is knight takes d4 queen takes d4 knight c6 bishop b5 so pinning the knight a6 we just capture takes so now black has two bishops but the bishops are inactive at the moment cannot really go anywhere we just take here so if it takes with the c pawn we just castle long and after rook b8 so here you cannot bring out the bishop after rook b8 there is rook h e1 and we have this pressure on the center but if it takes with the e pawn so the idea of this is to bring the bishop here on g4 or maybe on e6 something like that we will go knight f4 so this is an interesting idea trying to win the c5 uh, square because earlier if we do that here it's useless because there is no pawn here once he put uh, rook on c8 then we cannot even play knight c5 because he will just capture it back so after e takes d5 e takes d5 knight a4 the setup here of black is to play f6 to bring the king here on f7 we will just go queen c3 bishop d7 we could just castle here after king f7 i think bishop b6 is a it's a good move after queen c8 rook h e1 and here although we don't have the bishop pair i think we have a comfortable position because we have this great control over the dark squares on the on the queen side and not to mention there could be a pawn storm here coming in his position so uh, he has to be careful here i think uh, if we misplace this middle game then uh, we will get a winning position easily so if you play if we ever play knight c5 and he captures i think we have a good position because uh opposite colored bishops always favors the attacker and we are the attacker here because we have h3 g4 him not so much he cannot uh, push the pawns uh, he can push the pawns but if it will not make any difference it will not make any threat i think the pawns here on the queen side the a6 c6 d5 are harmless pawns while our pawns here are really threatening so now let's take a look at after knight g7 d4 c d4 knight d4 let's take a look at knight x d4 so this is the main line the idea of this is that after queen x d4 he will go knight c6 trying to open this bishop so after knight c6 we will just go queen d3 
Here, there are two choices, b5 or bishop c5. Of course, there could be other moves too, but uh, I think it hasn't been played yet or uh, it's not common. It's not very common. The common move here, the common idea is b5 and bishop c5. So if our opponent goes for bishop c5, we will just go e5, trying to have uh, control here. If castle, knight e4, and after bishop e7, bishop d2. So here, uh, uh, the position is fine. We could go for the queenside castle. We have a pressure here. We have a great control here. If it tries to go f5, we could just play knight t6. And we have a good position because if it takes, then we have the bishop pair. Plus, he has a weak pawn on d6. If it doesn't do that, then we just leave the knight here on e4. And uh, we could try generating an attack here as always. And because it's opposite sides castling after castle queen side. So now let's go on to the d5 move after queen d3, d5. So this one is trying to, your opponent is trying to confuse you with the pawn sacrifice, which we will just capture. E d5, e d5. So if, if knight b4, we will just play queen e4. And it will lead to an end game where our opponent has an isolated pawn here. So the positions are the position is two bishops versus two bishops, but he has an isolated pawn here. So I think uh, we have good chances of winning this. So the game can continue like this: King d8, Bishop c4, Bishop g2, Rook hg1, Bishop f3, Rook d2. So the king is still not safe because the pieces are not yet in the game so after rook d2 king c7 we could just simply take and here the bishop cannot go out because the g7 is hanging and if it tries to move the rook then the a7 pawn will fall here so here he has some drawing chances clearly but we we are clearly a pawn up and i think it's very hard to lose here so so we are just uh, playing for a win or a draw if we ever tries to make a mistake. So now let's take a look at pawn takes d5. So after e takes d5, we will just take this with the queen. And here there are two moves, queen e7 or bishop e6. So after bishop e6, we will just capture this, rook d8 and then bishop e3. So the idea of this move is putting pressure on the a7 pawn and trying to defend this c2 pawn because knight b4 and knight d4 is coming. So after bishop e3, knight b4, check, bishop b5, bishop d7, we could just simply take and we are clearly a pawn up in this position. There is some compensation but I think uh, not much and once we consolidate our, our position, it's very easy to convert this kind of advantages in the end game. So instead of that, a better try would be to play queen e7. So giving a check first to avoid the queen exchange, we will go bishop e2. After bishop e6, now we go queen g5. So after queen g5, if we castle, we will just take this and go bishop d2 and Next move is castle. I think there's no way for him to prevent that. If bishop f5, we just castle. And if knight d4, we have to give the, the pawn back here on c2 by playing bishop c4. But only for a moment because after bishop takes c2, there's rook d e1 and the bishop and pawn here on f7 is... The bishop on e7 and the pawn on f7 is hanging. So after bishop b4, bishop takes f7. After rook h f8, bishop h5, we're clearly a pawn up, although there is some compensation. Once again, once we consolidate the position, I think it's very easy to win this advantage. So now, let's take a look at the main line here. So after knight g7, d4, c d4, knight d4, knight d4, queen takes d4, knight c6. Queen d3, d5, pawn takes d5, pawn takes d5, queen takes d5, queen e7. So, uh, so the lines here are really long and um, 
it's it's very nice that uh, you need to it's very nice for you to really know these lines because these are very important because it reached the territory of the open Sicilian and uh, once you manage to master these lines you will win a lot of games because these are engine suggestions also these are the moves that was played by top level players by international masters grandmasters super grandmasters world champions so after queen e7 bishop e2 bishop e6 queen g5 so this is the line that we just discussed after castle we just capture here and we will go bishop d2 and try to castling on our own but he could try f6 here so after f6 we will go queen g3 knight d4 and now our king is safe so he has this knight xc2 move so take note if he tries to win a piece it won't work because his king is still trapped here rook e1 bishop takes e2 bishop e3 it's just a uh, good position for us if he gives this bishop back then we're clearly a pawn up not to mention his king is not safe but if he tries to play bishop a6 we, ha we have this bishop c5 move it's just losing for him so after castle knight c2 is the way to take back the pawn we will just play f5 so here if it takes we will just go f takes e6 and we have a winning position because the knight here will be trapped at the same time the king is really uh, bad here so if he tries to run we have a check here and a check on d1 or check on d3 so there are multiple ways to win here after king d8 and if he decline the the sacrifice so let's say he plays bishop d7 we could just play rook b1 and still i think we have a winning position already because the knight here is awkwardly placed at the same time the king is not yet castle if he tries to castle here i think it will not survive long long because there is bishop f3 bishop f4 rook c1 and we have a winning advantage so those are the lines here in the knight ge7 knight ge7 move and this will transpose to some lines of the open sicilian but uh, i think it's okay because it's very it's very short compared to the actual open sicilian and this is i think this is one of the this is one of the few times that we will play the move d4 and transpose to some lines so uh, it's very nice that uh, you need it's very I think it's very important to know this so that uh, you will have an advantage if your opponent plays this knight ge7 move this queen d3 move so uh, on the next video we will discuss the the d5 move so this d5 move is the main line here in the e6 variation against the grand prix attack and also the g6 move the main line so see you in the next video thank you very much